What we have here is a niche within a niche within a niche. Potentially the ultimate niche vehicle. I'm trying to imagine the person that would buy it. It's the person probably who can't get a hold of a GT3 RS 992, already has a normal GT3 and wants to change it a bit. Well, luckily, those clever people at Porsche have got their Skunk Works performance racing outfit, Manti Racing, which is now owned by Porsche to develop a handling kit for the 992. Say so handling kit, it's quite extreme. It's a full set of track springs and dampers. It's some aero, a different rear wing. It's brake linings, it's it's a lot of things. And I'm at Brands Hatch because uh, I want to see what it's like. So it's no great hardship really, a fantastic circuit Brands Hatch. I'm only on the Indy, but it's a never ending roller coaster around here. A really good test of suspension. Let us see what it's like. And then we'll discuss how much it costs. You'll need to be sitting down for that bit. So, into Druids, second gear. Immediately, the rear wheel steering makes it feel like it's going around the corner far faster than it has any right to. Down to Graham Hill, and Nick's second here. Back wants to follow me around, but ultimately, get on the gas, loads of Porsche traction. Okay, fourth gear through the quick left, right into clearways. Yeah, okay, it's got a bigger rear wing. You can feel it's got more downforce. And there's some under body changes as well and some front flicks. Not quite sure how much they really do. You forget what a staggering engine and gearbox this is. As an ex-owner of a Touring, I can tell you that I prefer my new gearboxes, but this engine was designed to work with the PDK. It's more efficient this way. Okay, what we've got is a very, very firm setup. This feels, it's really exciting actually. I'm getting lobbed about. It's very, very well supported. Stiff. And isn't it ironic that given the colour, which is ruby stone, made famous by the 964 RS, the stiffest of all RSs, this seems to emulate that car. It's really rock hard. Look at me getting lobbed around here. Whoa! Ha -ha! Yeah, it's a wild ride. I quite like it more than I thought I would. God knows what it'd be like on the road. It must be horrific. Put on the track. Yeah, okay. Nearly 9,000 RPM on those upshifts. 136 over the line is strolling on. You can just hook the apex, bit of understeer, get on the gas, and she just flies. It's efficient, but it's very, very good fun. It feels sort of like eight tenths of a cup car, it's so stiff. I like it. Also, have a look at it from the outside. It looks pretty spectacular. It's so low. You've got those rear carbon discs on the uh, on the rear wheels. They look fantastic, don't they? Oh, yeah, I tell you what, this is, um, it's not what I call a subtle experience, but it turns the 992 GT3 into a bit of a track animal. I like it, and it's very analog. It's not clever adaptive damping, it's just more support and a more sophisticated damper. What happens if we turn everything off? Let's do that. It's fairly relevant, isn't it? But let's do that, come on. Into Druids, everything off. Second gear, give it some tap. Okay, yeah, it's still very intuitive doing that stuff. Not that you ever will on track, but there we go. I've covered that off for you. Consumer testing at its finest. Tell you what, boys and girls, this is a bit of a surprise. I thought it would just be dynamically a bit of a waste of time, but it, it, it pulls out the inner track monster that is in a normal GT3, I'll give you that. Anyhow, let's have a look around it, a poke around the parts, and then we will discuss the thorny issue of cost. We'd like to ask for a moment of your time.
So you can see the difference, can't you? The ride height is dramatically different. It's adjustable. You can go as low as about 20 mil. We're in what you'd call a track setting today, which you wouldn't probably have on the road. So this is slammed on the deck and the cambers, you'll see from the track shots, are really aggressive. But let's talk about the money this thing costs. I've got my crib sheet because there's lots of numbers to discuss here, but the headline figure is this. Sit down, 50,593 for the performance kit. That includes the aero work, the suspension work, and some flicks on the body as well. So, I mean, I can't really begin to describe how much money that is. And that doesn't include the wheels, which are, wait for it, 9,165 quid. And you've got to pay for the fitting on top of that, so it's probably another 5,000 pounds to have it all fitted. What do we think? Okay, it's a very, very extreme set of chassis upgrades, but think of it this way. If you can't get hold of a GT3 RS, and also you think that car's wing is just too big and ridiculous, this might well be the solution. Downforce is up by quite a lot. It feels profoundly different on circuit. And also, aren't we all a bit of a sucker for a slammed ride height? It looks magnificent like this, all tied in, tight shouldered. I love the Manti stickers. If you're like me, you're a sucker for Manti and the logo. Manti means Olaf, it means the Nürburgring. And for that money, let's say £51,000 without it fitted and without the wheels, it goes 4.19 seconds faster around the Nürburgring. Per second a lap achieved, that has to be the most expensive tuning kit on the planet. Don't get me wrong, it's a vast amount of money. It leaves this car here, even without ceramics, costing £214,000. It's vast money. But you can argue these cars are fetching overs anyway. Can I justify it objectively? No, I can't. Did I really enjoy driving it on the track? Yes, I did.